There are thousands of features you can use in JavaScript, but there's one that stands above the rest and is one of, if not my favorite features, and that is the INTL or internationalization feature. Essentially, it's a collection of a bunch of different objects in JavaScript that make it really easy to format things in different languages or just format things that are more human readable. You can use this when you have a site that's in multiple languages or even just to format things in one particular language just to make it a little bit more human readable since a lot of things are really computerized. This just makes it so much easier to read as a human. I use these APIs in pretty much every single project. In this video, I wanna break down the different things you can do with this API and really show you why I love it so much. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. You may be thinking we're starting in a little bit of a weird spot because we're inside of the documentation here for the INTL object on MDN, but this is just to show you what's all possible and I'm going to link this documentation in the description. But essentially, if you scroll down to this constructor property section, you can see that there's a bunch of different things you can do. All these blue links right here are for different formatters. And some of the most common ones you're going to use is the date time formatter, which makes formatting dates super easy. We have a list formatter for formatting lists of objects with conjunctions like and or but. The number formatter is incredibly useful. And then we have the relative time format. Those are the most common ones you're going to use, but really all of these are super important. So to get started, I'm going to be using the date time formatter. So what we can do is just say const formatter is equal to, and we want to create a new intl dot. And as you can see, we have all those formatters. I want to use a date time format. And every single formatter for the most part is going to be structured in the same way. They're going to take a locale as your first option. So for example, I could say US English right here. So this is English in the US dialect. And then the second is going to be options for how you want things to be. So how you want to format your different days and so on. By default, if I just specify US and that's the only thing, and I just say formatter dot format, which is a function that I have here, I can pass it in a date. If I log this out, you'll see that it'll format that date on the left, right hand side of my screen. So you can see it formats the date by default, just like this. And this is because I'm using the US format. If I were to change this to a different format, for example, I wanted to use Spanish, you can now see that the day comes before the month. So again, super useful for when you want to format things inside of different languages. This makes it really easy. Also, on almost every one of these internationalization things where you can pass a locale, if you pass undefined, it'll use the default locale for that person. So I'm browsing from the United States. I have all my browser stuff set to the US. So you can see it's using the US formatter by default. So generally, I like to leave this undefined unless the user is specifying what locale they're in. Then in the options, we can specify what we want to do. For example, I could specify how do I want the year to be formatted? And you can see here, I can make it two digit or numeric. So let's say I wanted to have a two digit year. Now you can see it's just printing out 23 because that is the two digit version of the year. Let's say I wanna do something for the day style. This is a little bit different. So I can say I wanna have a full day style. And now this is giving me the entire date as a full thing, super long out or I can make it short. I could say, you know, I want a short day style like it is by default. So you can really fine tune exactly what you want this to look like for your different styles. And it's going to format it in a way that makes sense for different languages. Also, if I were to format things, like if I go back to this long version here, you can see it says the word March. If I change this here to be in Spanish and I save, you can now see it's formatted in Spanish, which is really great. Again, it automatically does all those translations for you, which I really love. So this is going to be great for any time that you want to format a date and the date time formatter I really love. There's another one called the relative time format. Very similar, you just pass an undefined if you want to default to the current locale. And we have some different options. This one has much fewer options, but you can pass in some different options. And here, when we call our formatter, we're going to format a date. And what we do is we pass into here the value that we want to format. For example, I'm going to say 43, whoops, 43. And then we pass it in the unit that we want to have. So in our case, for the unit, I'm going to say minutes. Now, if I give it a quick save and I make sure I console log this out, so I'll say console.log, just like that. We click save, you can see in 43 minutes. If I pass in a negative value, it's going to say 43 minutes ago. And I can do the exact same thing, like let's say I pass an hour here, you can see 43 hours ago. If I do like one day, you can see it says in one day. And if I change some of my different styles here, so I can change my style here, I can say that I want it to be long. For example, I want it to be short. And I want it to be, what's the other one here, narrow. Depending on what you do, you can see it changes around slightly and it'll have different things based on your lo locale. And also I can come in here with numeric. And if I set this to be auto, you can see that this now says tomorrow instead of in one day. Or if I put it to always, it'll always use the numeric version as you can see here. So it's really cool for doing different formatting based on relative times. 
And I actually have a full blog article where I break down how you can actually do this kind of formatting where you have a date and you want to compare it to another date. It's going to give you the exact relative date time format. I have a full blog article breaking that down as well as going more in depth into this. I'll link it in the cards and description for you if you're interested, but it really goes over the true power of this you see this all the time for example on like social media it'll have you know this was one hour ago or like 15 minutes ago and all of that can be done with this relative time format because if i change this to spanish you can see now it's written in spanish already automatically for me now the next one that i want to look at here is going to be the number formatter which is another incredibly useful one so let's go undefined here if we pass in options you can see this one actually has a ton of different options because you can format currencies you can format like you know concatenated numbers so if i want to do a currency i can say i want to do usd and I'm going to pass in a style here saying that I specifically want to do currencies. And now if I just come down here, console.log, I'm going to format my particular number here. Let's just say that I have a big number like this and I save. You can now see it's formatted inside of a currency style format for US dollars. If I change this to like a euro, for example, you can see right here that it is now formatted inside of euros. I can do yen, for example. Now you can see it's formatted for yen. So depending on what currency you have, you can see it's going to format like that. I can also do other things for my style here. It doesn't have to be currency. For example, I could say that I want this to be unit formatted and I can specify a different unit that I want to have. For example, I want to have liters. Let me make sure I do that correctly. There we go, liter. And now you can see it's saying that there's 345,000 liters. And I can even determine how I want my unit to be displayed. For example, I could do a long one. Now it writes out liters entirely. And of course, if I change it to Spanish, you can see it's converted that to Spanish. Another thing I really like, especially with talking about social media, if we come in here to notation, I can change the notation here to be compact. Now you can see it's changed to 345,000. If I add a few extra numbers on the end, you can now see 3.5 billion. So like YouTube, when they list out the views for a video, it's using essentially this code right here to determine what the views are going to list out as. Also, you can change here, for example, if you wanted to have like a scientific notation, you could do that as well. It's super versatile on what you can do. Also, you can limit what type of digits you want to display. For example, we have all of these maximum, so we can say the maximum significant digits, we can say the maximum number of fractional digits, we can say the maximum number of like integer digits that we're going to have, same thing with like minimum. So we can say the minimum digits for the fraction is going to be two. Now, if I have a number that has a lot of decimal places, so we're gonna say like four point, a bunch of different decimal places and I save, you can see it's limiting me to essentially have at least two fractional digits. If I change this to be a maximum, you can now see that it's eliminating me to exactly two. So it doesn't ever go beyond two. And if I were to give myself a minimum, minimum, let's do one here. Now you can see that it's saying two. If I have no fractions at all, it'll just force me to have at least one. So it'll say dot zero at the end. And obviously if I have one, it'll just show one. So this is a really great way of showing only a certain amount of digits and essentially doing this kind of rounding for you. And this last format I wanna talk about is actually a little bit of a different one because it helps you with doing translations really well. And that's going to be the plural rules. So again, you pass it in a locale, I'm gonna use undefined. Then you can pass in some various different op options inside of here. I'm not gonna really worry about this too much. But what this allows you to do, if we have this formatter, is you'll notice it doesn't actually have a format option. It has a select option, which is going to be what we're gonna use you pass it in a number. For example, let's say we pass in one. Let's just see what the result for this is going to be. So we can say console.log. We're going to print this out. You can see it prints out one. If I pass in two, you can see it prints out other. Three is going to be printing out other. If I pass in zero, it's going to say other. Now this is really useful because depending on what type of language you're in, you may want to change how a word is spelled based on if there are more than one of them or if there are less than one and so on. So for example, if I have the text, there is one mouse. You can see that if there's one mouse, I want to print out the word mouse. But if there are two mice, I say there are two mice. So in English, a lot of times you have a word for one and you have a word for more than one. And that's going to be what you're gonna do. Same thing, if there are zero mice, you're gonna say zero and then mice. So what this library is really nice at doing is you can see when we have one, it specifically tells us we want to use the word for when there is one of something. So we can say, okay, we know that if we have one of something, we're gonna use the word mouse. While if we have any other thing where it says other, we're gonna use the word mice. This is one of the most useful features you can have when it comes to translating an application between different languages, because I know I want to use the word for mouse, but the amount of mice that I can have is going to change depending on like, let's say a user input. A user can say there's one mouse or there's going to be 10 mice. I need to be able to determine what word I use based on that user input. That's where this type of formatter is incredibly useful because I can say, hey, if it's one, use mouse. If it's other, use mice. And that's all I need to do. 
And in some languages, it's a little bit more complex than English, where there's actually multiple different things. So if you have two of something, you may use a different word. One of something may be a different word. Ten of something may be a different word. So depending on your language, this will actually tell you exactly what you need to know for using the correct word based on the amount of something that you have. And that's really all there is to these internationalization libraries. Most of them are fairly straightforward, but if you want to go deeper into them, I have blog articles on a lot of them as well as videos on them. I will link all of that in the description down below for you, and I'd highly recommend you check those out. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.